as a way to bring us closer to God. I'm asking now that it no longer brings most of us to God. In fact, it may start to become a disturbance. It may, in fact, become an obstacle. Is there no need then to unfreeze the halachic system as we know it today and bring it at least back to its foundations, let's say, just the Tariyak Mitzvot and not simple. But I'll come to that later to see how we could develop such an idea. In your theory, you're saying that it's, that it's the best type of reaching out to the God, the best type of reaching out to the God is one that's done from freedom. Uh, are you taking into consideration what the Gemara says about Gadol HaMetsuva Velasa and Mishael HaMetsuva Velasa? Yes, uh, Professor Kelman also mentioned that, right? So I'm basically saying, yes, that is true once you're in an emergency. The rule applies that it's greater to be in a than not to be in a is when you are in a situation where you can't get there on your own. The more says that in relation to women with certain that they're not obligated, they're not in the system, or even to guy <coughs> who are totally not in the system. Yes. And it's still, I don't know the more, but drama and Tosis apply it to, to guy who are not in the system at all. Right. And therefore? And it still says, Bela Ham Tzuvah and Yishayim Tzuvah Velos. Yeah, but I don't know if that, that, that was set within the system. That now that you are living under specific religious con uh, conditions which are not too great anymore, then this particular rule that you are obligated and that it is better to be obligated and do it out of your own free will will indeed be preferable. But I'm saying that Avram Avino, Yitzhak and Yaka were living on a much higher level when the truth is exactly the reverse. The Gemara is speaking about after Sinai. It's not speaking from before Sinai. I'm speaking from before Sinai. Before Sinai is the ideal situation where you're not at all being commanded about anything at all. Now that you're on a much lower level, the best thing is indeed that you get commanded. And that is then on a higher level than not being commanded to keep it. Because keeping it then out of your own free will is not at all similar to the way how Avram Avino was keeping it. Or was living his life in the presence of God. Why not? Pardon? Why because not? it is a level which we may not understand, but is so high that the meaning of commandment is basically such an obstacle, and, and being a person who is being commanded stands in the way of what you want to achieve. After there is a Yuridat Hadorot, it is no longer an obstacle, it is the best way to deal with the problem once the problem is there, which the problem you cannot solve, you how cannot do away with. How can we ever get back? I'll come to that. Can I add also that, that before, even before Avram and the rest of the others came on the scene, there were still shivimits that were, off, that were I think, in the form of commandments also. Sure. So perhaps that's all what was needed and not anymore. So, but there, there is not. I don't know if it came, let's say, after Noah. So, but for Noah and there wasn't this this totally free environment to reach out to God according to one law. I'm prepared to accept that and say then the ideal religion would be Shewa Mitzvot Shemay Noah and not one more. Right. Thank you. Okay. Pardon? And many people say that. Did he eat also or no? Right. Uh, it has something to do with me. Let me show you something else here. There's the Sephora which is a very radical Sephora if you think it through till the end. I once mentioned it before, I'm not sure if it was here or in last year, whatever it is. Sephora asks the following question, a radical question. He says, why were certain meats not given after the Mishkan and after the Chet Ha'ekel? For example, Kashrut, many of the Korbanot, uh, many of meats not of Tahara and Tum'ah. The whole concept of purity and impurity. He says, why was that not given before the Geta Eagle, with the Ten Commandments, let's say, when the Mahmat Har Sinai took place? <coughs> Excellent question to ask. And it's an historical question, but it's a deeply religious question. So his stand on this matter is that if the Geta Eagle would not have taken place, then there would not have been a need for the Mishkan, and therefore there would not have been a need for the Kashrut laws, and there would not have been a need for Tarat Amishpatha, there would not have been a need for Kurbanot, and so on. So what is he saying over here? 
He's saying something very interesting that comes a little bit back to the question which you also asked, and that is the question from God knowing beforehand what will happen, yes or no. The question here is, or better what the Sforno is saying, is the following. He says, listen, every time when a new crisis came about, there was more need for mitzvot. If the crisis would not have come about, these mitzvot would never have been there. Now, what God had originally in mind, I do not know. I only know that in accordance to the Sephorno, and possibly Rashi also, they are of the opinion that how worse the situation gets, the more HaKodesh Prochu throws mitzvot on us to help us out, or as he writes over there, more or less, he says the reason why the kashrut were given is that you only need kashrut laws when you need a diet. When do you need a diet? When you are sick. If you are healthy, you don't need a diet, you can eat anything. But now that you are sick, which you have shown by the Geta Ekel, you now need more mitzvot, because otherwise it gets worse. So we're helping you out. Emergency measurement. Yeah. Obviously the Ramban and all those uh, who oppose this, or all those who have a very different idea about the Korbanot and why it is that the Mishkan came about, the Ramban says, the Mishkan has nothing to do, it's not the follow-up, it's not the totsa'a, the consequence of the Geta Ekel, but it's already given the command before the Geta Ekel, there's a lot of dispute about it, all these matters are open. I'm just saying, if you follow the Shita of the Sephorno, and you think it out till your end, he's basically saying, or giving me support in my theory, mitzvot are given in according to a crisis. And how more there is a crisis, the more is a need of mitzvot. What about the mitzvah given to Adam Rishon at the time of his very creation, which was you can eat from the trees, but just don't eat from one of them? Maybe that that was one of the commandments. Or is that, a, is that a necessary ingredient in the creation itself? It, it may be that that was necessary, I do not know. It may be that it indeed it was not necessary. Why there are also... Why would it have been an inherent part of the creation of Adam? It may be that there are a few mitzvot required. So a minimum totally amount. Or, no, not, uh, perhaps not totally free, I agree. But I'm saying that the also 612 were not necessary. And how more it gets a crisis, the more the army is sold. And now let me straight away move on. What happens now in the, in the halachic system is, and the historical situation is, that how more the Jews get into crisis, the more the rabbis are creating halacha. But the ultimate goal for this was to help them to get back to God. And the question which we need to ask today is, does it still work? And if it doesn't work, then the question is, is there now no need for something very radical, different, by which we do away with the many of, for example, rabbinical laws, because instead of what they are or should be doing, and probably did for our grandparents, they are no longer doing for us, and the, instead that they help us out, they become a real religious problem. So so there are not inherent value, they are a response to the moment in which the Jews find themselves. That's what I'm saying. But I'm not denying that God gave them. I'm only saying one thing. Sinai was an emergency moment. What about when someone came to celebrate something like Hanukkah? Hanukkah is definitely a good example of something that was an emergency in the form that, you know, Something happened in Jewish history, they felt the need to celebrate it or to remind us of that, so Hanukkah came in. No, it can be in a positive way as well. Uh, uh, like uh, you said before, uh, you know, uh, today the Haggadah is an enormous problem because we are now following all these things. If we make a big celebration about it, but the question is, does it still work? That was what Asaf asked last week, right? And if it doesn't work, then we need to ask the question, then it has lost its purpose. If it has lost its purpose, what are we going to do about it to bring the purpose back and bring the religiosity into Pesach anymore, which perhaps needs to be done in another way than the Hakadah, which we are reading at this very moment. Now what I'm saying here is very critical and obviously very radical, yes, and I'm not even saying that I've come up with a completely new
a logic system where everything will then be worked out. I'm only saying there is a need to discuss this because we are now in a situation in which we have a problem about halachic, let's say, 